I'm going to try to explain in under five minutes what social networking is about and try to explain it in a way that makes it relevant to folks in mathematics. We'll start with the ubiquitous Facebook. This is what it looks like when you log into Facebook. You see all of the activities of all of your friends on this home screen here, and you can scroll down the list and see what people are up to and leave them comments if you'd like. So for example, I could go and wish my sister-in-law a speedy recovery, and this will post to her page. When she logs into Facebook, she'll see down here a little notification that says that somebody's commented on her page, and she'll be able to post back. So in a sense, it's like really fast email. Nice thing about Facebook is you can kind of keep track of people you don't normally see. So most of the people that I have on my Facebook page are actually friends that I don't see in person. In the same way that you know your colleagues in your own department, I feel like the people I interact with on Facebook, on blogs, and in Twitter are like colleagues that I meet in the hall here and there. Facebook can also host groups. So for example, you can search for NCTM. And you'll see two groups here that might be relevant, the NCTM headquarters and the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, which has 681 fans. So let's check that out. Looks like NCTM is posting a problem every week here, and you can go and find it. If you're a math teacher and you've become a fan of this site, then you would be updated when a new problem posts. You can also use a page like this to advertise events that you have and get RSVPs for those events. So we see that Facebook can provide a place for you to promote activity, and advertise events and get RSVPs to those events. It's essentially just a free marketing tool. Another social network that you might be aware of is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more of a professional network. Generally you don't see students on here unless they're students who have started looking for jobs. This is a lot less active than a network like Facebook, um, but it does provide a place where you can have discussion. For example, we have a Mishmatic network where we can host discussions. I can see who the members of this network are, so you can see those there. And as the manager of this network, I can actually add lists to pre-approve people. So you can take, for example, your membership list and just pre-approve them to join this, this network. And say once a month, you could take people off the list or put people on the list as membership changes. So this is one example of a social network that's a bit more controlled than something like Facebook. With Facebook, you would have to have a bit more of a um, laissez-faire attitude towards it. LinkedIn provides you a place to have something of a resume on the internet. I'll show you my profile. So you see you can put in education and what you do and where you've worked and where you've gone to school and uh, recommendations from various people you know if you can get them to recommend you. This might seem kind of like, well, why not put up a web page? But you can also search the people in your network for their locations or a certain type of expertise you're looking for. For example, maybe you'd like to find somebody who's good at social networking. So you could search your network for the words social networking and see if it shows up on anybody's profile page. So that's Facebook and LinkedIn. Let's move on to blogs. I'm going to show you three blogs real quick. Here's a blog from the MAA where they post a new problem every day. This is my blog where I talk about math, technology, and teaching. I post a couple times a week on topics that are of interest to me. This is a non-profit blog. It makes no money. I just post because I want to share what I know and get comments from others. Some blog posts get no comments, and some blog posts you can see get quite a few comments. This uh, blog post about Wolfram Alpha, for example, has quite a few comments, and that's really what blogs are about, giving people a chance to be in on the conversation, um, share what they know, learn from what you know in a way that's non-formal and you can see if you read through this one that there are a lot of people who have a lot of things to say on this topic. If you're going to put up a blog, you have to be willing to let people make comments. There are some ways to screen those comments. For example, you can set it so that comments from any individual user have to be approved twice before just allowing comments, and that tends to cut down on the spam quite a bit. Here's another blog that I quite like called 360, and they have some great little topical stuff about math and the news on this blog. Um, and again, they have uh, some comments and blog posts that you might find of interest. In most blogs, you can search by topics and tags. So um, if there's something that's particularly of interest to you, like humor, you can look in the humor category of the blog and find posts that have to do with that. So it's like a web page, only it's constantly changing and we're constantly adding to it. And uh, there's lots of good stuff out there on blogs. In particular, I should mention, although the MAA Minute Math one isn't quite so popular, 
MAA also provides an RSS feed for a blog called Math in the News, which you can feed directly into your um, course management system, which is really nice if you're teaching online or hybrid courses, or even if you just have a course platform for your math class. Last thing I want to talk about is Twitter. Twitter is very hard to understand. This is my little twirl screen right here. Uh, these are all the people I follow and uh, comments that they've made. You'll see the ones in yellow are direct comments to people that I've made or they've made to me. It's a little bit like a text messaging system and to be honest it takes at least a month to really understand Twitter. Uh, but for any good conference I would suggest that you actually go and create a hashtag for the Twitters. For example for the fall conference you might use the hashtag pound sign which tells you it's a hashtag AMATYC09 and that would be a good way to allow participants who want to say something about the conference or something they've learned a really easy opportunity to do this. It sounds crazy, but you have to remember that at most conferences we don't have internet access, but a lot of us do have smartphones. And so if you've got uh, internet access on your smartphone, you can actually start posting to Twitter using the phone that you have in your hand and sharing with other folks. So anybody who's subscribed to this will see what other folks at the conference are saying, and you can get a good feel for what's going on out there. NCSPOD is another organization I belong to that's on Twitter. Well, they don't have a lot of tweets, but uh, they have posted, for example, um, when board elections have happened, to submit proposals for a certain conference, to check out the president's blog. Um, just kind of informational things that you might send by email. You can also send them this way as well. And if you're lucky, they get retweeted, which means that people um, take this message and re resend it to their own network, kind of like forwarding an email address. So really viral messages um, that might be of interest to a lot of people tend to get forwarded to a lot of different networks. Twitter's kind of hard to understand and you have to build up a network before it really becomes useful to you. Until that point, it might not make a lot of sense to you why people are on Twitter. But let me just show you one example of why I'm on Twitter. I've been using this to tweet my dissertation and little hourly reports using the hashtag DRPT for dissertation report. And so if you search for a DRPT, you'll find a little one hour um, updates on what I've been doing, what I've been reading, um, what I've discovered about my dissertation. I'm up to uh, hour 232 now, but uh, I can assure you that all of the hours are here, which makes it a really interesting way for me to keep on track, and I've developed a network of people who are all interested in what I'm writing about and reading about and provide me some feedback when I need it. So it can be an extremely powerful tool, but it, like I said, there's a little bit of a learning curve on this one. Not that it's hard to use, just that you won't understand it for at least a month.